Howdy folks, my name's Christian and welcome to Bullish On Farming. Today just stopping by our cows on our home farm this morning before heading to the other farm. <laughs> and what a gorgeous morning we have here today. Uh, let's see, today is the 24th of November. Happy Thanksgiving to all our American friends. Uh, we're in Canada here, southern Ontario. And we got hit with a cold front pretty hard. Snow squalls came in, gave us two feet of snow. And, you know, I put out some hay for these cows by their feeder in the barn just across the way, the yard there. And they spent most of their time there. While our sheep were out in the pasture, right by our ho horse barn there is where we have our sheep set up. And they were actually digging and grazing and foraging throughout the whole... Um, blizzard and that was awesome <laughs> uh the cows are being a bit lazy and just eating easy but now as things are thawing out we did hit minus one or two last night but we're warming up a bit we're going to be between five and seven degrees celsius and so things are going to be thawing out things are going to be getting wet and you know some people might worry about having their cattle on their fields uh we're just talking about three hereford heifer yearlings here folks so they're on about five acres and as i'm walking now i can feel the ground and since we're starting out quite firm after a freeze uh, i'm confident to leave these girls into the afternoon and i don't think anything crazy is really going to happen if i have to i can bring them in and give them the yard and the barn and this is kind of the back and forth game that we can play in canada because we just had a week of sub-zero hard freeze temperatures okay and then we put our cattle you know on the other farm where i managed 60 head of angus we had them on the field and we would spread bales for them and we would just actually drop bales on their edge and let the cattle mob them that herd went through two a day these girls i just give free range to this five acres for now now I will be using poly wire and moving the group as a mob, but these girls just came onto the farm three weeks ago. And um, you know, there had been no cattle on these fields for two months. We got our uh, yearling bull over there, who's a low line Angus cross with a Hereford. And so the beef cows will be getting from these mums to be, putting the bull in with them July next year. 2023 they're going to be three quarters hereford one quarter low line angus um well i think that's how it works since the bull is half and half and these girls are purebred hereford i just split it uh how i thought it'd be but whatever it is we're going to be getting a smaller framed beef cow out of that breeding um technique that's what i'm hoping and i've done some reading up and there's some folks who've done it who use um you know a low line angus crossed with a larger framed cow and they use that cross as a sire for their breed to bring down the frame size of their cows if they're using something traditional like you know hereford angus or even something bigger like simmental um, and you wonder whether or not that, uh, low line can get the job done. I've heard it kid, but you got to remember that a cross bull is not going to be as small as a low line purebred. They're going to be, uh, hopefully about 75% uh, of the size of the Hereford. And so our bull I'm hoping is going to be like a 1500, 1600 pound bull, not huge, that requires, you know, grain and high feed intake just to maintain his condition. I want something that can maintain condition on grass. And if it needs a little bit more love in the winter, sure. But from what I've heard about these low line crosses and with purebred low lines is that they finish uh, their steers and heifers on grass within 24 to 28 months, no problem. And even do well through the drought conditions just because their frame is, is smaller than you know the conventional cow that people have become familiar with 
over you know the series of decades that really tailored to mass production uh, and large ag production but now independent farmers are finding that a smaller framed cow more efficient on grass is the way to go because it keeps your cost bill low and if you're buying grain you're automatically adding a category to your um, costs that doesn't necessarily need to exist if you have an efficient ruminant animal and it takes time to get there and it doesn't have to be perfect but if that's your intention for your herd and that's how you manage your animals uh, that's probably the direction you'll be going and so these girls I'm gonna leave on the field they've got another field yet past fence right at the tip of my finger there that goes to another six or seven acres and so you know things won't really freeze over and we won't lose the ability to graze probably until January and so you know today's November 24th we got another month plus a week five weeks six weeks that these girls could hopefully be grazing and same with our bull because those are two winter months that you're not intensive um bale feeding and although these are just three you know uh, heifers we may still actually be getting more head of angus uh, from the farm that i manage now which would be perfect is because they're organic or organic i raise those calves and the only difference is that they're now here on this land not uh, 20 minutes the other way and so a beautiful morning and plenty to offer these girls with regards to grass. I've been checking out, checking out their condition. They've been on the farm for close to, you know, three weeks soon. Uh, and I've noticed them putting on some pounds. But if I keep them on grass from now through December, and the bull as well, then absolutely. Because I'm really only going to be feeding hay January, February, March, April, so that's four months right there. And then, you know, a little bit of May before they turn out onto the spring flush. But uh, we're looking good. Um, we'll see. There's no guarantees that we'll get full grazing out of December. But, you know, these are smaller cattle with regards to they're only 11 months. So, you know, uh, I couldn't really tell you exactly their weight but uh, they're not over a thousand pounds yet. And so them running around on these fields, I'm not as concerned as if we had 1,500 uh, pound animals and you know, a bull at, a, at about one ton walking around out here. <clears throat> so, you know, as long as things are staying crispy, we're gonna see things could get soupy if things hover around seven degrees for extended periods of time. And, you know, I'm not saying that I want to be putting cattle on land when the land's not ready for it. We want to be regenerating the land, not degenerating it. But uh, you see what you can get away with. You know, if there's a part of your field that stays shaded most of the time and doesn't actually get sun exposure, it's likely those areas, the soil usually stays pretty firm. Uh, because it's actually the solar heat that will melt things much quicker uh, than the temperature. And so, you know, we have a high section on one of our fields at the other farm. I just pull up a, a wire and I restrict them to that higher section that stays firm and cold and in the shade. And we bale graze that uh, for extra days that we wouldn't be able to if we were in another section of the field. So that's what's beautiful about using poly braid. And I'll probably whip out some of those tricks to get us through the next five weeks. Um, but you know, uh, that's just a little bit of how we're looking to approach going into the winter. And um, that goes for the other farm as well as our own. It's funny, I spend so much time at the other farm, it's almost feel like, you know, I don't even have time for my own farm. Of course I do. Just taking a look at our uh, Herefords here. And I'm out with them, you know, at least twice a day, folks. I want these girls to know me. Every time I come out to the field, I don't want it to be an event. 
I want it to be another day in the park. You know, these girls, when I first got them, I'll say it, they were a little lean, but uh, happy with how they're filling out. And while the, those of you who know Herefords, they're a nice cow, as long as you set them up for success. Now this girl has always been a little bit more flighty. Her head's usually up when I'm around. It's good to see her grazing now. But yeah, this is the start of our 2B herd. Won't have calves from these girls till 2024, but we're not in a rush. We do it for the love of the game. Plenty of work to do on the land and to build up our animals and set them up for success by aligning with, you know, nature's way and how it's been designed already. Don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, you know, I didn't grow up as a farmer, came to it in my later, you know, more as more recently within the past five years and uh, really just went head first and very grateful for it and grateful that I'm able to share things like this with you guys. And I'd just like to say thanks for stopping by and God bless you all. See you on the next one.